All right, you guys, welcome into today's team meeting. Hi, guys. So it is like the middle of December, basically. And as you guys saw yesterday, I got out of jury duty. I am so excited. Oh, my gosh. I literally was like driving there, and I felt my jaw like tightening up. Because just thinking about like having to step away from the business this time of year and not knowing who is going to watch my kids and like all this stuff, I was just like stressed out. So I really, really feel like when that lady said Merry Christmas to everybody, you guys are excused that she was talking to me. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. I actually went into the bathroom and I started crying a little. I'm like, thank you, God. So anyway, you guys, life happens. Stressful stuff happens. It's how we work around it to keep our businesses going. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We all have um, stuff, you know, that we deal with, like... Um, Lori is going to talk to us about um, depression and anxiety, and I, too, you know, struggle with some of that stuff, too. I also struggle with being a perfectionist, um, putting too many things on my calendar where I get over busy and do nothing because I freak out, like, it feels too piled on, and so then I'm like, oh, forget it. I can't even do any of this, so then I don't even tackle one thing, you know, and so there's little things that all of us deal with, and that is the importance of staying in personal development, okay? It's so huge as we run our businesses. So before we get going, I'm just gonna share with you guys um, a couple of reminders. One, if you are looking to still bring on three challengers this month, okay, and you wanna help three people change their lives, and you wanna do it by the end of December, I have put together, it's gonna be really fun, I'm actually gonna start posting in there today, um, but I'm putting together a three lives club or bust, um, just an event page. I didn't, I thought about doing a group. I'm like, no, let's just do an event page so we don't have one more group to follow. <laughs> so it'll be really easy. It'll just go for two weeks and every day I'll post in there. I'll give you guys some, um, posting ideas that you could use. Uh, you could turn it into your own where you have your own face and, you know, different things like that. But just to give you guys some ideas and like create that momentum of posts on your page, which is going to help to give you traction. So remember, if you want in, you need to let me know so I can add you into um, the event page. Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing is January the 4th. If you're talking to people about hammer and chisel and they want to get into that really big group with Carl, Autumn, and Sagi, the big challenge group, that starts January the 4th. Okay, you want to make sure that you remind people they need to get their orders in a week before January the 4th in order to get it on time. And because of the Christmas season and how busy and like our um, uh, shipping fulfillment center moved, um, it's probably a good idea to do it a couple weeks before just to make sure. So if you're talking to people and you know they want to start with you on January 4th, whether it's hammer and chisel, whether it's Pio, 21 day fix, whatever. I would just remind them, look, it's crazy busy. You know how the mail system is this time of year. If you want to start fresh January 4th, you need to get your order in this week, okay? So I would just go back and do a bunch of follow-ups, you know, put a little nice pressure, not, you know, we're being mean about it, but just a nice gentle reminder and a little pressure about, you know, how important it is to put themselves um, first. Okay, so those are the two things, and I'm going to hand it over to Lori, and then I'll come back at the end. Take it away. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Lori Post. I am um, an Emerald coach. I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression my senior year of high school. I, I had anxiety way before that, though. It started when I was, like, three. Like, I'm not even kidding. I used to get sick. They used to think I was car sick, but then I started throwing up before we'd even leave the house. So there was a lot of stuff going on when I was younger. But now it's more depression. Like I'm on medications for both anxiety and depression, and it's mainly depression. And there's days that I just, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to get out of bed, but I have two kids, so I obviously have to get out of bed. And so even when I'm up with them, there's times that I'll just lay on the couch. They're really good kids. So they let me just hang out on the couch. And if Chloe, Chloe has school, she goes to school. 
And there's times that I'm just like, are you sure you want to go? She always wants to go to school. But sometimes she'll let, she'll be like, I'm sick too. And so I would generally make her go to school. I'm not the type that encourages truancy. But there's times that I just can't. I just can't take her. And dance, I have called my mother-in-law many times to take her because I just, I can't do it. And I'll just lay there. I cry a lot. I just don't want to do anything. And I've, I had gotten better. Like I'm, I'm on um, Zoloft and Wellbutrin. And the Wellbutrin helped me so much to where for a while I felt like I was on crack. Like I, was, I had so much energy. I was cleaning everything and I was so happy, like done home about everything. And then it leveled off to where now I'm like more normal, but I still have a few bad days here and there, but I just don't want to function. And it can go on for like a week where I'm just, I'm just sad. I just want to look, I, I don't have a reason. I can't pinpoint my trigger yet. I, I try, but I don't know what sets me off to where I just, I just want to lay there and I'll watch TV and I just have a rough time, but I know what I need to be doing to get out of it. And that's what I have to do. If I let myself go for like more than two days, it's just not, <laughs> it's not good. So to get out of it, the first thing I have to say is get out of bed and don't go back to it. Like I get up early to help my husband get off to work. And I would occasionally go back to bed after he left because he leaves at like 6.30. And so if I went back, then I wasn't going to get back up till after 8, which is like two hours of wasted time. <laughs> so get out of bed and do not go back to your bed. And exercise like right away. Even if it's just some yoga and stretching for a little bit, do something to like, get you going. I know that sometimes it's suggested that you pray and meditate when you wake up. I will go to sleep if I do that. I have to be going right away. So exercise and drink your shake. This is not just a push for Shakeology, but you need to drink your shake because it really helps. It, for one, it gets you going. You have your metabolism going right away, but there's just something in it that just makes you feel better after you've had it. I just feel better after I've had it. And then go outside. Don't stay out inside all day. The, the sun, like the vitamin D, really does help make you better. And the fresh air, just being stuffed up in the house all day does not help. You got to go outside. That's what I've been doing lately. Like if I start to feel like I don't want to do anything, then I go outside and I get some fresh air and it's okay. Another thing that brings me down is a messy house. Oh, I've also, I also have obsessive compulsive disorder, <laughs> but it's not as bad as it used to be. So if it's messy in the house, it makes me crazy. If the kitchen is getting out of control, I just, I can't handle it. And I'm the one that cleans. Like I have two kids. I have a husband. They don't do anything. <laughs> the kids pick up their toys and Freddie's really good at throwing stuff in the trash. But um, otherwise I don't have any help. And so that can make me crazy too. So clean. If it makes you feel better, clean like a crazy person. But otherwise just like try to keep it tidy. It uh, it just makes me happy when everything's put away. <laughs> and also talk to somebody. You can talk to them about depression, like if it's somebody that has the same thing as you, but just socializing with friends. Don't keep it all in. Don't keep it to yourself. Just have fun with your friends. I know that when I'm down, I avoid people. I don't respond to things. I don't go out of my way to talk to anybody. I just... I don't answer the phone, but you have to make an effort to get talking, get out of your house and go for coffee. Just talk to them on the phone, FaceTime them, see somebody. You can't just, you can't just keep it all to yourself. You have to talk to people. What was the next thing? I do agree with praying and meditating and taking time to breathe. I like to do it sitting in a chair or standing up because if I'm laying down, I will go to sleep. <laughs> so <laughs> you, that's part of my like, just keep it up, keep it aware. Uh, just don't sit down, don't go to sleep. If you need a good laugh, if you need to keep laughing, but I would 
suggest, I'm gonna mute, um, can I mute Laura? There, okay. Um, watch a funny movie. I'm a big fan of Will Ferrell, he gets me going. <laughs> but if, if you need something, like I'm just, nothing's helping, you need to laugh. You need something that's gonna make you like cry, pee your pants, laugh. Like you need something good. And also, I mean, we should be doing this anyways, but avoid your sugar and carbs. That stuff can make you feel like the comfort food. You're like, oh, I just need some like mashed potatoes or something that like makes you feel good. It's not gonna make you feel good later. Like you're gonna be like on and up and then you're gonna have a really bad crash later on and you're gonna be really tired. Depression makes me so tired. <laughs> If you haven't noticed, turn off the news feed on Facebook. I can go through there for one and spend, like waste time just looking at everything. But there's so much sad stuff. There's so much sad stuff. Just well, bad things going on in the world. Obviously, you want to be aware of what's going on in the world. You can check check out the news now and then. But people losing their kids, things happening to their homes. It just. It brings me down so much to where I just have to turn it off. I can't, I can't see all the bad stuff. I need to see dads coming home from being overseas. I need, <laughs> I need to see like puppy dogs jumping in leaves, the, the happy things. And just stop comparing yourself to others. That's another thing with the newsfeed. Some people are probably doing better than you, but there are also people doing worse than you. And you're not going to see that. Because Facebook is the highlight reel of everything going good. Not everybody's marriages are that perfect. Not everybody's fitness is that perfect. They are not always doing it every day. But they, they might be. They might not be. And their food, who knows when they ate it. it <laughs> it's not, everything is not always as good as it seems. So don't compare to them. This is your life. You're the only you. You're not them. You're you. And you can accept that. Accept that you're not perfect. It's not something to be embarrassed about. I'm, I used to be embarrassed. Like, I'm on medication. I have a mental illness. But it's, there are so many people that go through it. There, you're not alone in it. It's not something to hide. Obviously, I'm fine with just talking about it now. But a lot of people aren't. But you have to accept that. And you have to accept that your life may not be where you want it to be now, but it's not the end. You can still do it. You can still get there. I know some people, it helps to be able to know what triggers you and to reorient your thought process to where you're focusing on the opposite of the trigger. But I don't, I don't know what my trigger is yet. I, I try, and I know that helps with meditation, but I just, <laughs> just all of a sudden it down. So I don't know what it is. So if you write out, like, why you shouldn't be like that, why you should be happy, what you should be thankful for that's going on in your life, that can help turn the positive. You can't just say, just be happy, just be happy the sun's shining, just smile, because that doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's not that simple. You have to try, like you have to focus on the good in things. I I know when everything started getting down. Like I was overstressed in high school and I used to have panic attacks. I used to pass out at random. And it just it was just I thought it was just overstressed because I was a perfectionist. I wanted everything to be perfect. I wanted the above 4.0 average. I wanted to do well, but I freaked out on tests. So I wasn't, I mean, I still got A's, but it wasn't like above and beyond. And I was involved in so many different activities because I wanted the great college resume. And I didn't get into a great college. <laughs> it was all just like a letdown. And then going to college, my parents didn't want me to go because the last year of high school I was doing so poorly emotionally, they were ready for me to go on my own. I still got to go, but then I still had breakdowns because college is stressful too. And it was 
a culture shock. So I was still having issues. I was still passing out, getting ambulances called on me because I was with kids, which is terrible for the kids. Like I used to work in after school programs and it was like, I would know that it was coming, but there's nothing you can do about it. And so after two years, two years of school, I got a job and like I was on different medications because the beginning of everything with the medications, figuring out what's going to help you, that's the hardest part because sometimes you feel like you're even worse. Like I had bad reactions with Lexapro and bad reactions with Prozac. Like I just, it, it made me so much worse. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it, but um, then I was on Effexor for a while and that was good until it wasn't. And so you just have to keep up on it. And then when I had, when I was pregnant, Zoloft was supposedly the safest when you're pregnant and I couldn't go without it because I had been um, suicidal. And so I needed something. I didn't, I, I don't trust myself without anything. And then with Zoloft, it got to be where it just wasn't enough. When you're sitting there on the couch and you're just staring off into space or you're just crying and you don't know why and you're like, well, everybody has bad days. They don't have like a week's worth of bad days. They don't sit there for a week just crying. If, if it's gotten to that, you need to talk to somebody and you need to get help. And it's okay. It's okay to be on medicines. That's why I'm on Wellbutrin now. And it really made everything so much better. Like, I feel like I could be a spokesperson for Wellbutrin <laughs> because it has helped so much. And, but obviously I still have bad days to where if it's more than, if it's more than a few days, if it's more than a week, then I know that I need to go to the doctor and I need to get an adjustment or I need to figure out what's making it like that. Hormonal changes, so much can set you off. And it's just, so I'm going to interrupt you real quick. That's fine. So, um, that sounds like really, really tough. I didn't know that you had been suicidal. Like I know it's very common when people struggle with depression. Um, you know, we see that in Anita, like she's kind of been talking about that, you know, too. So I know it can be scary, but what one question I have is like, so through all this, you became a coach in June. So how, has coaching uh, helped, you know, with, with your depression and um, like when you do have those bad days, like how do you work, how do you work through it where you're still on social media and you're still posting and you're still, you know, reaching out to people? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, before coaching, I didn't exercise. That's why I got into it. Like I had gained so much weight. And the exercising portion has helped so much because exercising helps. It gives you endorphins and it brings you up. And that and Shakeology have helped a lot with it. Um, as far as Facebook, if it's like one day, I can, I'll disappear. Like I'm not on there. Um, but then like after like this, the next day when I'm like, I have to do this, like this is my, my job. This is what, how I help support my family. Like I wanted to get into it to take some of the stress off my husband. And so I know that I have to do stuff. So I have the list of people and I just go through the script. I, I know that we're supposed to be present. And so I notice when my conversations aren't as productive because if I'm just not present, it's not working as well. So you, I kind of have to force myself to suck it up and find something going on that I can post about. If it's, I mean, I'm doing like the same things every day. I'm still doing my personal development and I'm still doing stuff with my kids I'm still eating, obviously, like you have to eat food. And so I still have, there's always something to post about. And so you just, you have to do it. You have to find something. Like I could take a picture of, I'm sitting at my desk right now talking to all these people and that's a post. 
and so you just have to like there's always something to be posting about and talking with people and making sure you're adding new people you don't have to be totally aware when you're just adding friends like you can still do it you can still get more people that's and so that's what gets you through like those days like the the redundancy the things that you have to do to make a successful business the things that you don't really want to be doing are perfect to do when you're down because <laughs> you're just sitting there. <laughs> so that's really what's kept me going that way. Like you just have to. That's about it. I need yourself. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Cause like I even have bad days too, you know, and I, fi I find that when I do and I look throughout my days, uh, for me, I noticed I haven't been in my personal development for a couple days, and I'm like, shoot, okay. Because, like, you know how sometimes you're, like, you start analyzing yourself, and you're all, like, what's missing that I was doing a few days ago? Because a few days ago, I was fine. I was, like, flying, yeah. you know what I mean? And then you kind of get down, and you're like, okay, what if, you know, you, you tend to, like, need to analyze yourself to figure out, like, what am I not doing or doing differently, you know, um, that might be making a difference for me. It's not reading my Bible or getting into personal development. If I'm not on top of like both of those things, my mind gets affected very easily. And then that's when I start comparing, you know, myself to other coaches yes. and, um, you know, why am I not at this point, you know, they've been doing the business less time than me or, you know, thoughts like that. <laughs> so, yes. Um, but yeah, I'm so, I'm really, really glad that you're on our team because I know that we have other people on our team that also struggle with depression. So um, I hope that it helps to know that you're not alone. Like, and I think that um, as women, we tend to put so much pressure on ourselves, especially if we're a mom and we have so many uh, balls up in the air and we're juggling, you know, so many different things and we want to be perfect at all of them, and that realization that we can't um, is sometimes hard to admit because we want to be, you know, the one that sometimes gets the attaboy, and you're doing so good, and that kind of stuff, and so sometimes we're striving for that, and when we don't hit that, uh, you know, we tend to get down. <laughs> so there's, there's so many little things that, for me, trigger um, uh, when I see myself, you know, start to spiral down, but you know, you're definitely right. Like you have to stay connected to people. You have to uh, stay engaged with the business because if you do pull back and you pull back long enough, you're going to lose that momentum. And then losing momentum could actually make you go into a depression thing too. Cause you're like, how do I get the momentum back? And that could bum you out, you know? <laughs> so, that's a great thing. That's a great thing about Beachbody is I can take a day and sleep in. Yeah. And I can take a day and just sit there and I can do stuff on the computer. But I can just sit there and zone for a day because it's only a day. And you're not going to the office. Yeah. I'm not, I don't have to put myself together. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows that you took that picture four days ago. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like the days when I know that I'm going to be on my heavy period because I, I tend to be fairly regular. And so when I start, I know for me when my heavy days are going to be when I'm going to be on the couch. And so those days are the days that I tend to schedule out my posts. And I'll take pictures from you know, several days before, or sometimes I'll use ones that I've done before and um, I'll just put something new on there. And when I'm emotional and I feel <laughs> so weird, but when I'm really emotional, I feel like I create the best post because I am already triggering myself into emotions and I feel like it goes into people more almost like it's hitting, it's hitting their emotions too when like I'm emotional and I'm sharing you know what's going on so like I really liked your post today Lori how you were talking about getting ready for um, the team call and how you kind of just briefly touched on 
um, the fact that you're struggling, you know, you have a struggle with depression, anxiety. I think talking about it on social media, um, if that is like your pain point, um, which is what a lot of network marketing companies call like, you know, when you're going to be talking to your niche market, um, if you have this pain point and you talk about it, you're going to be attracting other people that also struggle with that. And because uh, you're admitting it, which is hard to admit when you know you don't have it all together. But when you're admitting that to people and you're saying, "Here's how I deal with it," uh, you're becoming that inspiration, like seriously. So I just want to encourage you to keep going and um, to keep talking about it because I really, really, truly feel that you could help so many people in that area. You know. So, all right. Well, thank you very much for sharing today. I hope that it helped everybody. I wanted to, um, real briefly, I'm going to read from, I'm almost at the end, Lori. <laughs> I think I only have like two more chapters left. It only, it only took me all year. <laughs> it's so good. So, just real quickly, because I know we're going to run out of time. This actually really, really hit me yesterday. Um, he talks about this concept of going from believing to expecting. And um, he was saying how much of our life is spent waiting. There's a right way to wait and a wrong way. Too often when things don't happen on our timetable, we get down and discouraged. Even though we have the promise in our heart, we give up and settle for the status quo. I believe it's because we're not waiting the right way. Um, to wait with expectancy means that we are hopeful and positive. We get up every morning expecting good things. We may have problems, but we know this could be the day that God turns it around. This could be the day you get a break that you need. Waiting should not be a passive thing. Waiting the correct way means you are on the lookout. You talk as if what you believe is going to happen. You act as though it's going to happen. You are making preparations. Uh, too often we're believing one way, but our actions are demonstrating the opposite. We're actually preparing for a defeat. Maybe you come from a long line of divorce in your family. Instead of being afraid of ever getting married or worrying that your marriage will end in divorce, you need to start planning what you're going to do on your first wedding anniversary. Um, as you stay hopeful and positive and make preparations to succeed, you need to understand there's a difference between believing and expecting. You can believe to have a child and not ever get pregnant, but once you go from believing to expecting where you get that doctor's, hey, you're pregnant, <laughs> you call your friends and your family and you let them know the good news. Um, interestingly, you may go months and even say, I look the same, you know, I don't feel any different. But you know that you're expecting because your doctor, you know, told you to. So you need to do something similar. When God puts a dream in your heart, um, maybe one of his promises comes alive in your heart, in your mind. Um, you dare to believe that your family can be restored. You dare to believe that you can be healthy again um, to accomplish your dreams. The first thing is you have to let that seed really take root. And not just believe it but you need to walk by faith and not by sight, even when things um, aren't happening. So the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because, like, planting seeds is really, really big in this business. So, like, it might not happen as fast as we want it to, but we have to believe and we have to expect that it's going to come because it will. Like, you have to have that faith that, if you're putting in the work and you're being consistent at posting and you're being consistent at your follow-ups and drinking your Shakeology and getting your workout in and you're doing, you're just doing the action steps, right? You're doing the business action steps. As you're doing those steps, you have to expect that, you know, what am I trying to say? That um, the results that you're wanting are going to come from putting in, you know, the work. So even though it might not happen as fast as we want, it will happen. It will. And, you know, if we're behind, um, it really, really helps to double up what you're doing. Okay? Because sometimes when you're behind, um, you do have to, t you know, put in more effort 
to get to the end result that, that you're wanting, okay? And especially if you're wanting to touch three people's lives before the end of the year, and you haven't, you know, maybe brought in uh, one life yet that you've helped, then you do need to double, maybe even triple, you know, the efforts. And I really want to encourage you guys, you know, Christmas is coming. I definitely don't want us to be working on, you know, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, maybe New Year's Eve, because we can post pictures about that. But, you know, you're going to be with your family, right? And I want, I want our team to be the type of culture that, and the community where family comes first. I don't want us all to be like work, 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 workaholics and not enjoying, you know, the um, the results from all this hard work that we're putting in. And so knowing that we have these holidays coming up and family's going to be coming into town, why not work our hardest right now and get everything done right now so that when we go to take that break, we can truly relax and not feel like, oh my gosh, I haven't met my goals yet excuse me, I'm going to go to the bathroom and you're in, you know, posting or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you want to really just be like relaxed and enjoying your family and um, just creating those memories. So do you have anything else to add, Miss Lori? That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much for sharing with us today. I really appreciate you telling um, us some more about your story. I was trying to hold back the tears and stuff. <laughs> I wish I could hug you right now, but I am in my mind. <laughs> thank you. So thank you guys. And um, as we wrap up the rest of this year, let's just give it our all and um, change lives. That's what we're all about. So go out and make a difference in your world today. And I'll go ahead and post inside um, the Three Lives Club or uh, Bust um, in a little bit. And if you are not part of that yet, make sure that you reach out to me so I can add you um, into that event page. All right, you guys. So. Take care, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. See ya. Bye.